Um, I'll just start out and just give you some background on our company. Um, Snapstream is a software company. Uh, we're, we're about uh, 30 people located in Houston, Texas. And uh, we, we are well known for our technology to record lots of television and then search inside those shows. So we provide a way for organizations to uh, keep track of what's being said about them um, on TV. And uh, that's kind of what we're what we're known for. And we have a we have government customers from uh, small city governments uh, to large city governments, Los Angeles, City of Houston, up to um, you know federal government customers. So uh, there's there's sort of different sizes of our product depending on the size of your organization. And I'll talk I'll talk more about that. Um, so first of all. Uh, why media monitoring? And actually, before I get into the why media monitoring, let's let's maybe I'm going to pull up a poll question here. Um, so I'm interested in uh, why is TV uh, monitoring important to your to your government organization? So take a moment and uh, reply to the survey. Uh, and when you reply to the survey, I'll share the results back out to all of you that are attending. So. Um, Make it kind of kind of fun and, and interesting to to know how other people are responding. So, give it another second here. Let the rest of you all, rest of you, rest of you reply. Just uh, another moment. Okay, so I'm going to close the poll, and uh, pretty cool. We're actually split right down the middle. Um, you know, we have 50% uh, of you said you you uh, you worry about or you do TV monitoring for public relations, brand reputation, and then the other 50% for crisis management. Uh, very much lines up with what we see, um, you know, uh, uh, amongst our amongst our customers. So um, so why media monitoring? You know, tracking events that are happening in the in, happening in your community and then sort of how the public is perceiving them online or on on uh, in through the media um, it, it can be very important uh, making sure that as PIOs you are able to control the arc of the story um, and this is you know important especially when it comes to crisis management if you have a crisis situation it's especially important to uh, make sure that your message is re reaching the public and uh, monitoring the media is a way to do that. And then there's some other uh, places where monitoring the media is useful as a way to um, monitor public perception, um, spokesperson training, uh, and then just sharing coverage so that you know you have a database of when you've been mentioned before when you know there's certain stories that repeat themselves. For example, if you're um, an airport ag agency, then every Christmas and every Thanksgiving you're going to have certain types of stories and by having an archive um, you, can, you can refer back to those. And then we often see government, uh, interestingly, this was new to us when we learned this um, eight, nine years ago, but the, um, government organizations will use uh, TV footage as uh, uh, evidence in cases because You'll have um, suspects that go on TV and give interviews that are useful um, later. So uh, let me jump in with another another quick question. Um, I'm curious, how often is your organization uh, mentioned on TV? Are you on TV daily? Are you on TV weekly? Are you on TV uh, monthly? Or you're not sure how often you're on TV? Yeah. All right. So, to share the results. So, uh, you know, 20% shows daily, 20% weekly. Looks like we made this a um, multiple choice, multiple answer question. Shouldn't have been. So the results could be a little bit confusing. You might have had some people who check both daily and weekly because 
you're mentioned daily, you're also mentioned weekly. <laughs> but no worries. Um, you know, that, that basically, uh, you know, looks like we have a pretty, pretty uh, healthy um, number of mentions that happen amongst the people on the on the webinar, which is again not surprising. If you're a local um, local media organization, you're going to get mentioned most likely get mentioned on TV quite a bit. Uh, one more one more poll question right now. So how how do you currently monitor television at your um, government organization? Do you uh, do you use a clipping service like TVIs or critical mentioners or something else? Um, do you record TV on DVRs? We see that pretty often. And, and we equally often we see um, organizations that just don't monitor television. They're just not, you know, they're just not tracking it. So, uh, give a chance for any last votes. Um, great. So, uh, if you're interested in the results there, uh, let's try that. So, you know, poll results. Um, uh, about fit, half of you in uh, in aggregate use one of these one of these clipping services, and uh, and I guess in addition to the half of you that do that do some sort of uh, uh, that monitor um, TV mentions, the clipping service also 60% of the total group use uh, some sort of a DVR setup. We've seen those hybrid configurations where people do both. Um, and then, you know, fifth of you don't monitor TV mentions at all. And uh, um, that, those are all, all super, interesting, uh, super interesting results. So let's continue on with the presentation here. Traditional media monitoring has its limitations. You've got uh, clipping services, which can be expensive um, per user. They, uh, they might provide limited coverage. You may not get um, all of the... Uh, coverage of all the channels that you want. Um, there may be some channels that they don't cover, um, and the clipping services can sometimes be slow to deliver um, deliver the video in a in a higher quality. And then quite a few organizations still use DVRs and VHS tapes, and this is just time consuming, requires a lot of human labor, uh, unreliable. It's uh, it, you can miss recordings and. Um, you don't have a way to really search those recordings, so you're you're more often you know going back and finding something that you heard about as opposed to proactively and reacting, as opposed to proactively finding all the mentions and then you know trying to act on them. So, so what to look for in a in a TV monitoring solution? Um, you know you want you want to have uh, coverage of all all of your local TV channels. Maybe some national as well. Um, you want to be able to search unlimited, um, have a deep archive, and uh, uh, be able to get alerts. So just like you get Google alerts on email, um, you know there's a feature in here where you can raise your hand. So just by a raise of hand, you can click on the raise hand button. How many of you use Google alerts in your in your organization? So if you just raise your click on the raise hands, I see one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So, yeah, not surprisingly, every <laughs> not everybody, but a lot of people use um, uh, use Google Alerts. And uh, so, you know, you want you want something like Google Alerts, but for television. So, uh, and then you want to be able to share the TV clips. You know, you want to be able to collaborate around. Um, Around TV, around the TV clips, you want to be able to share them with your, uh, with your the chief of your police department. You want to be able to share them with your mayor. Um, that way, you can achieve on the same pages. Everybody can sort of be reading off the reading off the same playbook, and uh, that can be hard sometimes with television. Television can be something that is, uh, you know, is is hard to share with people. Um, so, with all that said, um, let's look at Snapstream. What, how does it work? What is what is Snapstream all about? So, Snapstream uh, typically will reside in your office. Um, you you will install a box, a lot like a VCR. So, for those of you that have a DVR, think of it like that box. You're going to plug your uh, cable or satellite or antenna 
or whatever your TV source is, you'll plug that into the back of SnapStream. Uh, and then SnapStream will be plugged into the network and anybody on your local area network can access SnapStream and uh, schedule recordings, um, search, search recordings to find clips, um, make clips, download those clips into their local desktop, um, email clips to uh, constituents or to people not using SnapStream, uh, upload clips to YouTube, We've got some great integration with Twitter and Facebook as well. If you want to take a clip off TV and share it out on your uh, social media channels. So, um, you know, and I'll get into the details of that. But the basic setup is like a, like a DVR. You plug your TV source into SnapStream. SnapStream connects into your network. And then you use it from your desktop. And Mike is going to give you a demonstration of the product. So. Before I continue on here, I, I want to stop and take questions. So, what I'm sure by now, um, you know, I've hopefully, uh, <laughs> you know, generated enough uh, curiosity that you have some questions. So, um, please, uh, I'm going to take a moment, like I said, to take some questions. So, if you want to chime in in the Q&A box or in the chat box, uh, let me know what you're thinking and what questions you have right now. Any questions? Yeah, so there's a there's a question here um, of you know can you share SnapStream amongst different uh, departments of the city? And uh, the answer is yes. So very much so. In fact, I was going to talk about that. And so so let's 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 go into it. And I'll talk about how one of the advantages of SnapStream is you know you can put unlimited users on it, and as a result. It's really easy to have this be a shared system between police and fire and and uh, the mayor's office and other organizations within the city government. So TV alerts, um, you know, you get you can get TV alerts to your inbox. Um, the notifications can be real time. And by the way, once I go through some of the features and before we do the demo, I'm also going to take you through like a brief case study of two city governments that we've worked with and that we did case studies with. So, But you can set up TV alerts. So for example, you see here a search on Mayor Sylvester Turner. We're from Houston, Texas. So um, that's sort of, you know, that, that's the mayor of Houston. And so, you know, they, it can be set up so that he gets a link to all of his mentions on a daily basis. Um, it can also be set up so Snapstream automatically creates a clip that is accessible to somebody, whether they're uh, on your network or not on your network. So there's a lot of power in how you can arrange, uh, how, how it can, these alerts can work. So um, you can search inside TV shows ad hoc. So just do a quick like, you know, there's something going on today and I want to find it. Um, it may not be something that you have a recurring search on. So here you have an example, you know, the Oroville Dam situation. I can go in maybe the morning after and see what's being said about the Oroville Dam. And when you click on one of those results, the, the screenshot doesn't show it here, but it takes you to that moment inside the show. So um, extremely powerful. That, that's real, the real power of, uh, of Snapstream. And then you can archive the TV shows. So by default, the oldest shows are recorded. Um, the oldest shows are, are recorded and, and retained, uh, or the newest shows are recorded and retained, and the oldest shows are deleted to make room for new recordings. And you could also put a lock on recordings if you want to make it so certain shows or clips don't ever get deleted. A few questions, I'm just going to, in a moment, jump over to those. Uh, there's a whole program guide where you schedule recordings, and then you can very, very easily create and share TV clips. So uh, I'm going to take a moment and answer questions. So there's a question here. Um, how does the setup affect the quality of existing bandwidth? So going back to the how it works diagram, we're really not, uh, just to be clear, there, there's no really very little internet bandwidth being used here because um, the t all of this is being done on your local area network. Um, how, how does it affect the network on your local area network, not the internet, if that's the question? is uh, for every person that might play something back at the same time, it's using up a small piece of your office bandwidth. Um, 
you know, two megabits per second or something like that. So um, generally, land traffic, lands have gotten faster and faster, and you know, it's but internet traffic really doesn't doesn't get impacted by Snapstream at all or very much. Um, you know, there's a question here. Uh, I would be using my home television as the as uh, at the um, as the office is not wired for cable. Okay, does that create a problem? And uh, does this only search the channels we subscribe to? So, second question first. Um, yes, Snapstream only records and searches what you plug into it. And uh, uh, so, if for example, you don't subscribe to HBO and you wanted to be able to monitor HBO, then um, you would need to subscribe to it in order for Snapstream to be able to record it. Um, on the second question, I think we probably might need to take that offline because I don't understand what you mean about home television. If you're going to locate the Snapstream at home, that's very doable. Uh, you said your office doesn't have, uh, doesn't have cable TV. You can, you can reside Snapstream in your home but then it's really going to be mostly accessible within your home, which may be okay for your use case. So, all right, with that, let me go back to the presentation. Um, you can also watch live TV. So if you have TVs around your office where you're just watching what's happening on live TV right now, um, you can just pull up live TV and flip through channels as well. So it becomes a way to distribute TV around your organization. And by the way, we also have a set-top box um, for Snapstream, uh, a $200 uh, Apple TV-like device that you can put on any TV in your environment, and then you can watch um, you can watch live TV or watch any of Snapstream's recordings on that uh, television up, mounted up on the wall. It has an HDMI output, but uh, uh, you can watch live TV. And then I mentioned this briefly, but we have integration with Twitter and Facebook. Um, you can also monitor transcripts or download transcripts if, if that's something that's of value to you. So just to go through some quick case studies, um, City of Austin, uh, when they came to us, and now they've been, they're old customers, they've been with us for eight years, they, um, they had departments that were all kind of doing their own thing where it came to, came to monitoring television. They, uh, some departments had VCRs, some departments were using clipping services, um, it was it was kind of a just classic fragmentation. Uh, here you see some photos of things that people had uh, had set up. They even had some people that had set up computers to do uh, to do rec TV recording. And uh, so they had you know and they had a total of 20 to 25 departments using VHS tapes. And what they were able to do, and in their case, they were able to do this because they have a really strong uh, network backbone that interconnects all of these departments. Um, we've seen, for example, here in the city of Houston, uh, there are uh, there aren't there isn't such a good network between every city uh, department. So, for example, police department is kind of in its own its own universe uh, network-wise compared to city hall, for example, even though they're five blocks apart in in our downtown. So, but in the city of Austin's case, because they had this strong network backbone. They put in a single snap stream. They were monitoring 10 channels at a time. Um, They're able to just centrally set up a schedule. It was managed by the uh, city municipal channel. And they were able to uh, uh, really consolidate all of the media monitoring for these 25 city agencies from the uh, Austin Energy, which does a uh, was local local power agency, energy agency, uh, consolidated the police department, the fire department, trade show bureau, and the mayor's office, and the list goes on. Um, anybody across the network was able to use their Active Directory credentials, which might be Greek to some of you, um, but basically. No new logins to set up. They just had to give access permissions to people. And uh, they could log into Snapstream and do searches, set up their own alerts, um, and kind of move to a world of self-service where they weren't relying on somebody else to provide them with clips. They could just do it themselves. Another good example is the Miami Police Department. Really not very different. Um, in their case, it was just the police department 
and uh, they were, had a very manual process. It was time consuming. There was no search capability. They had DVDs and TiVos. Uh, you can see some of their DVDs here. Uh, and, and, you know, they had somebody who basically spent all of their time uh, managing this setup and uh, then gophering for the moments when, when something was going on. Um, just by a show of hands, how many of you have uh, somebody in your organization that manages a large uh, stack or cluster of VCRs or um, DVRs, some sort of like old school recording equipment? Anyone? By a show of hands? I see a, I see a handful. Yeah, two, three. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Um, well, so that's what it was like before. Um, you know, as a as an organization, they were able to move away from that, and uh, it really really worked out well. They had a system that was suddenly user friendly. Um, it could be used by multiple people, so there wasn't one person uh, that was like the gatekeeper for for the entire system. Um, they were they were also able to get a uh, uh, a grant, a justice assistance grant, um, as a attached to their Snapstream system and uh, and it you know it didn't put somebody out of a job what it really did was it gave um, gave people more time to focus on more strategic and more um, more important tasks uh, so you know so there's a great uh, great outcome there you know <laughs> they had a great example of uh, of a project that they could spend time on that they couldn't spend time on before this thing called the teddy bear patrol. What was what was the teddy bear patrol, Mike? Do you do you remember what the teddy bear patrol was uh, was all about? Uh, you can you can unmute yourself and turn your mic on that way everyone can hear you. <laughs> I think it's probably worth sharing that story. I don't I don't could you remember it or uh, yeah vaguely it was a it was a community project where they would take uh, officers would spend times in schools with uh, children, and the teddy bear patrol was, you know, they would bring out a mascot. They had a, one of the officers that would dress up as the teddy bear, um, and, and, you know, they would do community service, kind of like D.A.R.E. And, and things like that, where they would bring community awareness to elementary schools and, and things like that to teach kids about uh, police, uh, police community activity and things like that, and they'd give away the teddy bears as a, a gift. Got it. Okay, that's uh, that's cool. I, now, now uh, that makes sense. Good. Well, you know, with that, I think there was another question. I'm going to share that question with the audience. Um, I mean, a couple more questions. So I'll uh, I'll go through these questions. So one second here. Um, has there been any known reported security concerns from ID IT departments in regard regards to migrating? Uh, into law enforcement and emergency management systems. Um, there have not been. We The product is uh, runs server 2016 and uh, you know the security wise there really aren't any issues. In fact I'll share an interesting story. We have an installation at the White House and uh, we also have some installations in various uh, government, federal government, defense agencies, and uh, we've been through pretty rigorous security approvals and have passed uh, just fine. In fact, one of the security reviews involved analyzing whether um, a, a, a outside access could, could um, or somebody could breach the network using the coax uh, TV input um, on the back of Snapstream because we take a TV signal in, uh, which is, you know, if you know something about the technology, that's pretty crazy to think that you would even worry about that. Um, so anyway, we've been pretty extensively vetted, not only in government actually, but some of our corporate clients, uh, like Yahoo, for example, have, you know, extremely, uh, you know, the very exacting standards for security and you know, we've been through extensive qualifications with them. So, so I don't think there should be any issues as far as, you know, IT security goes. Okay, with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Mike.
Daftrim is very easy. Uh, as you recall, we've talked about it living on your network. So it's as simple as just opening up a web page. Um, here we're using uh, Mozilla as our preferred browser. And it's as simple as using your Active Directory credentials to log in. So as soon as we sign into Snapstream, it brings us right to our home page where you have instant access to your library of recordings or setting up your Snapstream. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into our guide to kind of give you a rundown of how uh, it interacts with your cable signal. So by coming into our guide, when we set up Snapstream, we use your cable source, uh, your antenna, your your satellite feed to populate the program guide that you see before you. So that way, when you go through and set up your individual recordings, it's just like you're using your cable box at home. So, for example, if I wanted to record an episode of, uh, you know, SEC Storied here, we'll use this as a example of a news channel, all I would have to do is simply click on that show and then Snapstream gives me a list of options of what I can do. I can record a single episode, I can record all episodes of this show, um, I can record all episodes in this series if, uh, if it's a brand new series, uh, we can record a specific time slot or what most uh, PIO uh, agencies choose to do is record everything on this channel. Uh, that just makes it makes it easy for them to make sure they miss no content whatsoever, especially when breaking news uh, stories come up. So once you've set up your recordings, uh, the next section you come into is going to be your library tab. So inside your library is where you'll interact with all of your current recordings uh, as well as completed recordings. So with Snapstream, the unique thing is you can actually pull up a recording as it's being recorded. You know, so for example, if I wanted to watch, um, you know, MSNBC Live, we could easily pull up that recording and jump into the actual broadcast itself. So you can see here, we're watching, uh, you know, Sean Spicer give a press conference this afternoon, um, and it started us off at the top of the hour. Um, you know, on the bottom here, we have uh, easy to use DVR controls. So for if I wanted to jump to the end of this broadcast and watch it in live in real time, I could easily do so by clicking the skip to end button and then bringing us up to the current time frame of where uh, the press conference is still going on. Coming back to our home page, um, you know, we really want to talk about the search aspect of Snapstream. So it's very easy to search for content inside of Snapstream, whether it would be related to the police department, uh, the fire department, or whatever organization you represent. You know, I could easily type in the words police department, and you could see instantly Snapstream gives us a list of uh, content that's currently being recorded where police department has been mentioned. Um, or we can look at content that has been previously recorded, you know, such as our Fox 26 news broadcast at noon. You know, very easily we could pop into this broadcast, monitor the content of what they're they're uh, talking about here, and as soon as our search content comes up for police department, we could easily clip that content out and then. Uh, share that either internally or externally of the organization. So here's our story. I'm going to go ahead and create a clip of this segment. And to do so, we're going to use a toolbar here on the right. Um, so to easily set up a, a clip, we're going to create a clip start point here. And as the story plays through, we're going to go ahead and end the clip there and instantly take a you know, quick segment from this news broadcast. So as a police PIO, if I wanted to make this content aware to, say, robbery or homicide division, um, you know, or as we talked about earlier, we could use this as evidence in a criminal court case, um, we could click clip here and save that clip. You know, we'll call it Houston Police Investigation. And I can either clip and save that to my library or instantly share that content with, you know, internal or external users uh, uh, via email. 
So we'll simply clip this out, and then instantly SnapStream saves that clip into our library so we have that content uh, for a later date. Another great feature about SnapStream is the ability to build alerts. Uh, we, you know, Earlier we asked how many people use Google Alerts, and there was quite a few people that had their hand raised. Well, SnapStream takes on Google Alerts and, and gives you a much better um, tool to actually interact with. So when you actually come in and create your search, you could easily do, you know, we're going to use Houston Police since we're a Houston locally based in Houston, but for example, I'm just going to create Houston Police and create an alert here. And all you have to do is simply type in an email address or a distribution list and set your frequency. We can do as you know early as near real time, so if you're looking to really capture breaking news alerts um, as they come up, the near real time feature is a great tool and it will notify you as soon as any of your keywords populate in a recording. You know, other than that, you have normal frequency rhythms, uh, you know, such as hourly, every hour, daily, weekly, etc. So here we can easily build our library. I can do Houston Police. We can use commonly known acronyms, you know, for, for example, HPD, H dot, P dot, D. Um, you know, we can even throw in our chief's name and create a, a really extensive list of search terms that I want to, uh, to monitor. You know, and just by simply clicking save the alert, every day at 9 a.m. when I get into the office, SnapStream is going to deliver me a list of results that I can easily navigate through and you know, determine is this a piece of content that is in, important to, you know, an investigation? Is this a piece of content that I need to save? Um, or is it, you know, just a, a simple, you know, quick mention by the news broadcast, um, you know, where I can just kind of uh, push it to the side? You know, inside of the alert, you have access to jump directly into any moment of the broadcast. So if I wanted to see what they were talking about, here on our channel, uh, our CBS affiliate, I simply jump right into this position, and I can get the background story of what happened uh, during a SWAT standoff from the previous night. So very easy for me to kind of jump directly into uh, the position of mentions and really focus on uh, the content that is important to me versus, you know, uh, scouring through content uh, manually for hours and hours. Over to the right, you'll notice we do populate a closed caption transcript. Um, that's there for you to basically, you know, search through this content, search through this recording, um, or, you know, simply click on the keywords as you see them come up and quickly scan through the uh, this, this segment and, and make sure it's... Um, the content that you're looking for. You know, as you continue to create clips, um, you know, for example, if we come back to the beginning of this clip here and we initiate a clip, uh, we could easily share this content on social media, um, as Rakesh mentioned, to kind of um, get notice out to the community by easily creating a clip and then using any of our social media tools here. So, for example, if I wanted to share this with the community, we're looking for, um, you know, information about a suspect, I could easily say, you know, you know, looking for info about suspect, please call, and we can even tag our Houston Crime Stoppers group here. And basically, I can quickly post that to social media so that way anybody that's monitoring our Facebook page, Twitter, YouTube, whatever it may be, they instantly have access to that content uh, to interact with it and help us kind of, uh, you know, spread our reach, uh, you know, with uh, the news coverage.
So coming back into the beginning of uh, the homepage here, you know, last couple of things we want to mention is, you know, some of the automated processing that we can do for organizations. You know, those organizations that use DVRs, VCRs, and clipping technology or clipping services, um, you know, really rely on manual-based processes. You know, Snapstream is a, is a very good tool to very easily automate all of those tasks by, you know, using our uh, background task to simply set this, uh, the system up, have it automatically um, clip out content for you, have it automatically manage your storage. It can even automatically email you clips as the alerts pop up, um, you know, just by simply setting up uh, simple settings on the Snapstream uh, during the initial installation. With that said, we're going to go back to our questions here and see if we've gotten any more questions from the audience. Here. Okay, this is Rakesh, and I'm back on the back on the call. I think we're uh, I think go ahead and wrap it up. Um, you know, there's one more one more poll question that uh, that I want to ask. Would be oh, there's another question. Um, are video clips saved as MP4? And uh, and the answer is yes, yes they are. Um, so uh, so yes. The, that's the default format. All the recordings are made in H.264s inside of MP4 file containers. So, uh, yep, um, maybe the presenter, if you would. Yep. No. Any other questions here? Okay. So, um, You know, the couple of other things that I want to show you, if we we'll go to our website, other other resources that we have. Um, if you have a, if your government organization wants to do a proof of concept, get a demonstration unit at your place, um, let us know. We'd be happy to provide that on our site. Um, there's a bunch of good information. You can even test out our search technology. Um, go down the page and do do your own search queries. In this case, you'd be searching uh, Snapstream at our location. You're going to get Houston search results, um, but uh, uh, did we talk about pricing? We didn't, right? So, uh, and we don't have a pricing handout on here, but we'll uh, we'll send it to you all afterwards, and you a link to it. But we're very transparent with our pricing. You can see it on our site. Um, the most basic Snapstream starts at uh, $500 for a system that's a one-time cost for a system that can record two channels of TV at a time. Uh, and uh, then the, it's a hundred dollars a month after that, uh, and that is something you can record your you know two local channels on. We have a a version of that that can record four channels of TV. Um, it's called Snapstream Express, and uh, um, if you go to this comparison page, you can see the so there's a two channel, and then there's the four channel version. The four channel version is a thousand dollars and a hundred and ninety nine dollars a month. Um, then we have our more enterprise-grade product, which is the Snapstream server, and we do have a cloud version of the product where all you're installing locally is an encoder, and then you're uploading um, the the video, the the TV to the cloud, and the cloud is what does all the recording, and that starts at $300 per month. So, um, so there are a couple of different options, and uh, it looks like we did add the pricing page um, to the handout. So if you want to go back to the handout and Click and download. You can you can retrieve the the pricing. Um, Mike's contact information is uh, should be it's not on this last slide, but we'll we'll send it out to you. You get a you get an email from him, so you have it handy. And uh, if you want a demonstration of Snapstream given to your organization, uh, Mike can do that for you. And we would love to follow up with anybody here that might have an interest. And oh yeah, one last question, one last poll question. So uh, it help will help us in our follow up. 
you know, how soon are you looking to uh, purchase something like Snapstream? Uh, you have an immediate need uh, and need in the next few months. No timeline, 2018. Uh, we, had, we just had the Super Bowl here in Houston, and the Super Bowl dro drove a lot of people's uh, schedules for things because uh, there's a lot of new works happening in, in town because of the Super Bowl. So anyway, we'll let you reply here, give us an idea, and uh, we'll stay on the call and answer any questions that uh, that you may have. Looks like um, a few other questions. Oh, there's somebody asked, uh, I think they were replied to, but asked us if uh, uh, Snap is, uh, which is the parent company of Snapchat, whether we were any re relation of theirs. And the answer is no. Other than, you know, I use Snapchat. <laughs> so, um, okay. Well, you know, with that, uh, we, will, we will wrap it up. And uh, thank you all for joining us. I appreciate it.